I drank so much coffee, so the Lord provided. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so today is day 10, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so my topic tonight is that God would use our church outreach to bring people into the kingdom of God. Okay, so has anybody gone to the Bible to be comforted and instead been slightly corrected? Okay. So, well, that, well, that's what happened to me. Um, so I have to confess that I've been a little angsty, a little angry at the world recently, as some of you can relate. And you're like, it's just becoming stupidly ridiculous by the day. And so I, I just, you know, in the middle of preparing for this message, had that in the back of my head. Um, and, and so I was just angry, you know, because it's becoming ridiculous. And, and I had this idea um, from all the great movies you watch in the 90s and 2000s of living happily ever after. And, and we just had our baby, and I got really excited about, you know, getting to, to grow him up in the world similar to what I grew up in. And it, I, I was blind to the fact, but it was amazing. And then so I get here, and I look around, and sometimes it can seem like the world is burning to the ground, right? It just, it's not a pretty picture out the window. And so... At the time of preparing this, I was, you know, a little angry, and, and I was like, maybe I can salvage my plans, right? I can kind of cut the world out, and I fight homeschool, and we live in a shelter, and I grow <laughs> vegetables out back, you know, only the good ones, and maybe we can make it. We don't ever have to interact with the world ever again. So that, that's my plans, you know. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure you can, you know, guess where the Lord had room to correct me um, in that. <laughs> You know, and, and mind you, I really do know our calling, you know, our main calling as a Christian, as a church staff member, is that big one that Jesus gives us about making disciples, you know, the, the great, great commission. Um, I know that because I'm a, I'm a Sunday school kid, you know, I'm a private Christian school kid, and I went to college. I know that really, you know, Bible college, I know that really well, but I have this terrible habit of just, like, just focusing on me and what I want. So... So when I started this study, I, I, I got outreach kind of thrown to me. Like, I was like, I'm not going to pick one. I'm going to choose one of the leftover ones. And so outreach was a leftover one. And it just so happened to be, I think, the one picked for me. Um, so, so I'm going to start in Luke 11, verse 5. Luke 11, verse 5. Who has it? Because I don't know. Um, <laughs> going to be terrible. One time I got up to speak and all my notes disappeared. It was fantastic. Um, so Luke 11 says, it starts out with Jesus and he's telling a story and he says, suppose you have a friend and you go to him in the middle of the night and you say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, you know, as you find yourself doing. Um, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside says, don't bother me, the door is already locked, the kids are already in bed, and I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though that um, he won't get up because of your friendship, it is because of your shameless audacity that he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, he goes on after the story, and he says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the doors will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks the door will be open we know that right um so i want to take this kind of portion of scripture and share some thoughts um and then i want to give you some ideas on what we can pray for around this topic tonight so i want to focus in on this story of of in luke uh the man gets a visitor in the middle of the night how inconvenient right wouldn't you say and then this man who's been inconvenienced, goes to his neighbor's house, and because he has no food to offer him, he asks for it. He has no food to offer him. Um, and because uh, this man's shameless audacity, the neighbor gets up and is compelled to give as much as needed. Um, so my first thought when I was looking at this was, kind of took me to Matthew 6, 9. And it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, this is our great commission, our holy calling, and our prayer. You know, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, your kingdom come. And so the question is then, how is God's kingdom to be advanced here in earth? 
on, on earth, right? And, you know, that's the point of all our, all our outreaches, you know, a big point on Sundays, you know, is for the lost. It's, it's the lost. It's reaching the one. Um, for the Son of Man came to seek the lost, um, and then he commissioned us to do the same. And the way that the kingdom is advanced is not a trick question. It's through us, you know, his vessels. We are his doorway into the earth. Um, you know, and he chose that, and he continues to choose that, that his way for his kingdom to be advanced is through his people. So we have a kingdom responsibility um, to, to the people um, in the world. Matthew eleven twelve, going back to the story, or not going back to the story, but uh, Matthew eleven twelve says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and the violent people have been raiding it. Another translation read, um, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and violent people are attacking it. So there has been and is this, this violence that comes against the kingdom of God advancing. Um, and so then you ask, how has it been advancing if these violent people are constantly attacking it? And so the answer yeah, is that it's been met with equal or greater violence, right? in order for it to take more territory. Um, you know, the Israelites, they fought their 33 battles in the Promised Land. They fought 33 battles with sweat and blood and swords or whatever they had, you know, just out there clinking away. They fought 33 for the Promised Land that had already been given to them. Um, and so it's not abnormal to fight for what God has, has um, given you or commissioned you to do. Um, so the violent take it by force was, was something I found. And, and we need violent people to advance the kingdom of God. You know, not with fists or an angsty, like, ah, how dare you. Um, not in that kind of a way, but in an attitude of persistence, persistence kind of way. Um, so we need violence in our prayers, right? Um, violence in our prayers that invades the supernatural realm, you know, that God hears. Because if we pray according to his will that we know, that he will hear us. So we need to pray with violence that, that you know, beckons the ear of God. So continuing on with the, the thoughts in the story of Luke, the man at the door knocked with shameless audacity, right, with persistence and not out of hate or anger or frustration like I found myself in, um, but he called him a friend. He said, I have a friend who's on a journey and I need to give him food, you know. And if you remember in the New Testament when Stephen was killed, you know, he, he didn't curse them. You know, he said, Lord, don't hold this sin against them with his last breath. And then he died. And Paul was there. Saul. Saul was there. But Paul was there. You know, how many people did Paul affect? You know, generation. Like, I mean, obviously, we're sitting here today. Like, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. Um, Stephen. Like, he didn't curse the people. He blessed the people. He said God, he went to bat for them, right, with his last breath. Jesus, when he was on the cross, you know, with his last breath, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Um, you know, we need that shameless audacity to go to bat for the world around us, even when we are really frustrated with it. Um, your generations hang in the balance. Paul was on the other side of Stephen's story in the world, and all of us were on the other side of Jesus' story. Um, and then when you continue to read, and then he says, I have no food. It's really weird. And you kind of bypass it sometimes. I have no food is what the guy said at the door to his neighbor. Um, and so the thought on that was, like, we can do a lot in our own might, but what we do in and of ourselves, it won't last. Um, it's going to fade away. And we have nothing in and of ourselves to give the world, you know. It's not from us, and we, we need God, and we need to ask for food, you know, not only for us, but for our friends. And prayer is that asking. Um, prayer is the single most important thing we can do if we want to advance the kingdom of God, not only in our lives, but in the world around us. So if we're not praying for our outreaches, you know, we could be said we're wasting our breath and wasting our time because the hand of God's not on it. We can do a lot, we can do a lot of good intentions, but, you know, it may lead to the left a little bit, you know. Um, so when we pray, prayer is what releases the power of God into things we do for God, and that's a really big thing, and and it's what releases his power into the outreaches that we, we put into the community. So we ourselves 
cannot accomplish anything for God without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, and we did that really great master class on it. Um, it's a great master class. Um, so you and I, like, we have the best intention, best intentions, but we may get the worst results without God uh, behind us. Um, so when we go back to the story in Luke, um, we see in the story, his story, of going and asking for the bread. And then Jesus continues, you know, ask, seek, and knock, that little statement at the end that Jesus makes. That Jesus, his point was that our greatest task isn't to do, it is to ask. Um, God's job is to accomplish what we ask. And that doesn't mean we don't do anything, but it, what it does mean is that what we're supposed to do is only found when we ask God. Um, and that's when his power comes behind us and what we do for God actually then becomes fruitful and last generations. It turns, you know, the Saul's into Paul's um, and carries that word forward. And so that man asked shamelessly, right? That was, that was a big, interesting word that he, he threw in there. And Jesus tell us, tells us in that, that verse to ask, seek, and knock. And in scripture, even when the needs were the greatest and most obvious, Jesus required the person to ask. Um, so you, th there's a story of the blind beggar in Luke 18. He's blind, you know, like it's, it's not oblivious to Jesus. And he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? You know, and so he replied, Lord, I want to see. And he said, receive your sight, your faith has healed you. And Jesus was drawing this request out of the man's heart. So we see that we can't underestimate the power of just asking um, in, in, in our prayers. And we, we need a heart that's actually towards our city and towards its people so that we can actually have that request come forth out of our hearts to God. Um, that we ask for food in the middle of the night for them during their journey, right? And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. James 4.2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. Matthew 7.7 7, it says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. So w what was pretty nifty, is, I think it's nifty, is that the word ask here was like this present tense asking kind of thing. Somebody said it kind of translates to, the, just the word ask, translate to ask and ask some more and then keep on asking and then when you get worn out, just start all over again. It's really great, right? I thought it was nifty. Um, and so we see here that Jesus commands persistence in this verse and in the story, too, uh, with shameless audacity. He, he, he holds persistence in this. And so what we see, like, he says ask. So that's all inclusive, just an ask. And then he goes on to reiterate it two more times, seek and knock, right? Um, so the lack of asking, this is what was like a stab, you know? Like, he just... Sometimes in my Bible I write Jesus slap, um, like hashtag Jesus slap. So I know, that, like, wow, yeah, that was a... Anyway, so the lack of asking betrays our confidence in a God who does answer prayers. So, like, me wanting to go and hide in my corner is, like, no bueno, right? Because I'm, I'm turning away and from the God who actually can, you know, do something about, you know, everything that's burning down. Um, because the door is opened in the story, right? The door is open and... and all the bread that is needed was given. Um, so I'm wrapping up here, and then we'll get into prayer. The final thoughts are, are pray and ask without ceasing. Um, I think that was one of the themes that I, I dug out of here. And then to go to bat for the world around you um, in the presence of God and to be desperate. The, the, it described him as shamelessly, like he was shamelessly going in the middle of the night, you know, um, with every last breath, like Stephen and Jesus, to be towards the world and not against the world, and um, intercede for them like Moses did and like Abraham did, their reaction was to go before God and ask for him to save them, right? And, and God asked, um, we need to also ask God for a heart for our city, um, for the people who live in our city and live in our, in our lives day to day. We all have work. We all have jobs. We all have mailmen. I just came to that conclusion today. I have a mailman, and I don't know his name, and I, I just, we, we smile. Um, so, like, there's people in our lives already um, beyond just our outreaches. Um, so we need to ask for a heart for the city so that we can be the person who goes unashamedly in the middle of the night to ask for food for them. Um, it's our kingdom responsibility, and it's our utmost calling. 
and it's God's only legal way into the, the earth to, to take his kingdom forward. It's, it's who he's chosen. Um, and so on your papers is things that I thought that we might pray about, um, and you can pray for more things as well, as is the theme of 21 Days of Prayer. Um, and if you want to pray at the end, let me know. And I think we're going to worship now. <laughs>